Rainbow Crafts. Ah, I think we have to start again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maggie Woodley from Redhead Art. Um, join us today for some fabulous rainbow crafts. We've got some crafty bloggers here together um, to share some beautiful, colourful fun. And here you can see some of mine already whizzing by. I'll start off with these because they're very cute and then I can put them down. Um, these are our little rainbow gnomes, but actually they're walled off maths gnomes as well. So you can do some sort of maths games with these. But whether they're maths or not, I just think, you know, the colours of the rainbow are just a fun way to play with the children. Um, and these are actually made from um, corks. So this is a cork. Uh, this is, um, it's actually squishy. This is a tight with some cotton wool in it. And some, um, uh, what's it called felt scraps so this was really really cheap to make you didn't have to buy any little expensive little pegs or anything and actually ran out of yellow and this was a really good exercise for me in using what I had so this did not cost me a lot to make and the kids love playing with them and we've had lots of maths play with them and they are rainbow colored so I love these little gnomes uh, instructions on redhead art Next one along, one for the kids to make. Um, I'd actually forgotten we, we'd made these. We made this for a summer fair where we had a workshop uh, where lots of children came and made some jars. And it's literally uh, a glass jar with um, Mod Podge or some watered down PVA glue and tissue paper in layers. And it's really easy and you know the kids can help make it. Obviously the, the, the rainbow stripes, um, slightly older kids would have to make. Younger ones might end up making sort of like an Eric Carl type pattern um, but I think this is a really nice thrifty craft all from recycled tissue paper as well uh, next one I made especially for the hangout I hope you like it it's my little rainbow fairy um, out of a peg doll um, I just used uh, marker pens here because I wanted to show that you don't always have to use fine paint brushes a little bit of felt some of Anthea's sing sing tree fab glitter on the head and on the shoes um, and then a little bit of lace um, what's it called, gathered and, and wrapped around. And what I want to say about this one is, yes, I made this one for the kids, and obviously it's, in inverted commas, perfect, but it sparked off all sorts of creativity with the children. So I made this one, and they went, oh, and then they ran off, and they made their own in different colors and different, um, you know, some had pink wings and some had yellow wings and some had tutus, some didn't, but it, they all had glitter hair, I hasten to add. But, um, you know, it, 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 you can sometimes make something perfect and the kids can then go off and do their own thing. They don't always have to copy what you've done. Um, so a little rainbow fairy. And then lastly is a photo, uh, but I did bring a prop. This is my prop. Here we go. Because this makes great clouds if you're doing rainbow food, if you can see it here, is a rainbow cake um, I made for Pip Squeak's fourth birthday. Um, and lots of people ooh and ah and go, oh my god, that's so difficult. But actually, it's um, six layers of sponge with some food coloring in it. I did double quantities of a normal sponge and then divided it into six portions and then baked them um, I think in two in twos. And then to get the sort of rainbow pit, uh, Smarties in the middle, you cut holes into it with a cookie cutter as you assemble it and fill it with Smarties. And then some nice squirty cream and off you go. So those are my rainbow crafts and activities. I'm going to pass over now to Ali and see what she has for us. Hello, Ali. Hello, hello, hello. Well, you can see, um, not well, <laughs> I've got a few. And they're all fairly paper-based. I think that's kind of what we like working with in our house. So you can see these cranes behind us. We went to the End of the Road Festival um, a couple of years ago and they had a beautiful wood just full of these origami paper cranes. So we learned how to make them. Actually my father-in-law, their granddad, taught me how to make them. And they're very therapeutic. So here's some more. And you can see we use origami paper. So we can a little rainbow of them and they're rushing by. <laughs> Those are they. Um, continuing the theme of dangly things, we've got these hearts. Can you see? I'll, I will do the whizzing by thing like that to show you, to prove it's a rainbow. Um, fairly straightforward to make and again very therapeutic. Can you see? It's three strips of paper and you fold here at the bottom and I've stapled these. And then um, they're three uh, reducing in size. But I can't think of the correct term. Um, and then you staple them and we've used some nylon thread so that it's allegedly invisible. So I think they might be going Pippa's way. <laughs> so she's quite keen on those. Um, more paper folding. These are white, but I will show you why I'm doing this. My son, my nine year old son, makes these all the time. And they're claws. Can you see? I've got a couple of just to full effect. 
he makes them all the time and I find them around the house. But then he made them into something slightly more interesting, just for me. Here you go. I'll hold it up. So you can join them all together. And we were going to do this at Christmas and we never actually got around to it. We had a white one that was very boring. So I asked him to do a rainbow one. So there you go. A rainbow picture frame, maybe. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Oh, more paper based. Um, using the same origami paper, um, if you cut them into triangles and use Maggie's sewing machine, <coughs> cross, <laughs> there you go, streams and streams, and it, it's difficult to show you, but they look so lovely hanging up, there you go, that's it, we just sewed through the middle of them. They're my paper themed rainbows, and I'm going to pass over to Anthea now. Thanks, Ali. There, um, I love paper. It looks so simple and, and beautiful hanging up there. Um, I've got a, um, a few. That I'll start with this. I did this years ago, and I, I, it's been up on the wall um, with my eldest. And this is um, a paper plate. Love used to you don't do so much anymore. But when they were young, we used to do loads of paper plate collages. I like my collages because it's lots of different medias that people can kind of stick on together, and the kids like it because they don't get bored. They get to play with different things, painting. So this is kind of we painted. Um, the background first, um, and then they just stuck various sequins. We were doing a garden, so um, we've got two paper plates there, so it's 3D. So half half of a paper plate for the rainbow. We used um, craft sand, so it's lots of texture on this. You can't see it. So this is, but just basically, she kind of did a glued a bit, sprinkled it all on. Very very similar to using glitter, um, but looks very effective. As you can see, we've got some people say an upside down rainbow. <laughs> there we go. Um, but these are brilliant to use, and kids of all ages. So I'm actually going to do this again. We're going to have a go at doing this, but um, now that my girls are kind of probably four or five years older than um, when they did this, we've been doing. I love this. This is um, a drip paint. So you make the paper really wet. You lay it on a flat surface. You put it on a slight angle, um, and then um, I did this again with my eldest. Actually, we were playing with it, um, and you put a layer of water and then very watery paint and you allow it to trickle down. Um, we played with lots of different techniques and what I found was better actually, and I'll, I'll blog about this, is to actually you wet the paper, then do a layer of water, put the colour on top of that again. Before you put the next colour, do another layer of water, because that then causes the first layer to bleed and it's very runny for the next layer. And you keep kind of doing paint, water, paint, water, paint, water, and then right at the end, hold the paper up like this and you get more of a kind of bleed and what we took, did, we used different papers, so this is actually watercolour paper so it's specifically designed not to kind of bend quite so much and this is just cartridge paper which bends an awful lot um, when it gets wet and so what we were looking at as well is that the, how, how the water bleeds, so the water on this one and all the liquid kind of bled along the crinkles in the paper, it was more uniform than the other side, so you've had a lot of fun doing that and then I went on, and this is something that um, kids can do. I did this one, but my eldest is doing one. I, my felting is my new, um, or put it the right word. This is using a, um, a piece of um, square felt that I actually put in the washing machine, and it felts it up and makes it really bobbly rather than nice and smooth and kind of knits it up. And then you just lay, you thin out, and you lay um, bits of felting material on top, and they just poke it. It's very simple, actually. They just poke it through to kind of, you can see it comes through the other side. Um, to mesh it all up and you can kind of take strands, so I made it deliberately messy and we picked out strands to kind of blend the colours in. Uh, and this looks really good so we're going to stick this in a frame, um, but my other, all my girls are having a go at doing this because it, they can just randomly lay the pieces out and then poke it in and it doesn't matter how it goes and it's a good comparison when you've got the, the paint and the, the felt together doing a very similar um, kind of image. And I'm going to pass over to Kelly. Thanks, Anthea. Um, what have I got for you? Oh, felt. I'll start with felt. Um, well, it's not felt, it's pom-poms. Um, and I have to stand back for this. There we go. Is that far enough back? I think so, probably. This is possibly the world's largest pom-pom monogram. Um, a couple of weeks ago we did a hangout, and um, cardboard hangout, and I showed this better. You can see that's the back side of it. Um, and um, said that I was going to make it, uh, it's a door um, decoration for my daughter's birthday. Um, and so <laughs> since then I've added layers of papier-mâché papier and then subsequently set to with uh, currently 3,000 pom-poms. Um, they're still going, you can see there's a bit missing there. <laughs> I've got to wait for another delivery. Um, 
but it's all, it's almost done. Um, and yes, that's really all I can say about that, to be honest with you. It'll be great. It's going, obviously I'm using it for my daughter's birthday, but after we're done, it's actually going to hang over her bed. It's part of her kind of room decoration. She wants all the colors of the rainbow. And um, I've sort of, um, there's a website called Aunt Peaches that I quite like reading, and she is a fan of the pom-pom, and this was inspired by some of her crafts. So there we go. But it is massive. Um, put it down on the floor. Slightly smaller, more portable, but still the same birthday party, is my lovely cardboard crown, um, which Maggie would approve of because it's mostly recycled, almost recycled. Um, the card is corrugated card that I come from the box, and I don't know whether we were discussing this with the cardboard thing, but um, I took the top layer off. Um, I didn't realize you could do this, but if you take the top layer of um, corrugated cardboard off, it actually makes it much more pliable and bendy, and so that works incredibly well for making crowns and things. Um, inspired by Ali last week, who showed us some great quilling, I sort of went a bit bonkers. Uh, as in, drove, driven slightly mad by quilling. I don't think I'll be doing it a second time. Um, but and created the sort of rainbow effect, obviously, with with the quills. Um, stuck them on, created a rainbow shape, and then um, added a uh, tissue paper cloud. I don't know embellishment. I suppose to be the right word. Um, this is going up on the blog shortly. The little one's very taken with it. In fact, she's so taken with it, I keep finding it led around the house in some places. Um, and then again, the final sort of little craft, um, which is this one, ever so cute. I'm really pleased with this. Um, this is um, it's a toilet roll, toilet paper roll. Um, and it's been made into a pillow box. You see this quite a lot around the place. And I know that Maggie did this fabulous pinata bat um, way back in October for Halloween, I guess. So this is sort of slightly inspired by that. All I've done basically to create the sort of colours is um, I've used washi tape various colors and types. So rather than just using plain colors, you've got kind of a bit of texture and interest there. Um, open up the inside. There are sweets inside, although frankly, they won't last much longer. Um, and then very simply, I cut out two cloud shapes from um, paper, made them larger than the, um, the uh, little box, obviously. And all I've done, actually, is I've, I've used staples to kind of staple them in place. That just slides on the top, makes it nice and easy. And then all you need to do is add um, ribbon to the bottom to make a little mini piñata, you know, it'd be great for birthday parties or St. Patrick's Day or any of that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that will be on the blog too soon as well. Um, and I'm going to pass on to Liz. Thanks, Kelly. I think Kelly's called a, caused a world shortage of pom-poms because I couldn't find any anywhere, so I had to make my, <laughs> make my own. So I know who to blame now. Um, I had some of these little um, buckets. I actually picked these up in a charity shop, but you can get them in most craft shops, um, just little tiny buckets. And I wanted to use the handle shape to make a rainbow. So because I couldn't find any pom-poms, I had to make my own. So what we did is just made the normal, um, you know, the cardboard donut type pom-poms. But I think you might be able to do it with a fork. I think Kelly was saying you could try and do it. The reason I did it with the donut was because while they were still in donut form before you snip them, I thread basically just take off the handle, which I can't do with this one because it's too bent. Take it off, thread your donuts on so you've got them in order, and then you can snip them and they're sort of in place. If you try and thread it through once they're in pom pom shape, it's really, really tricky. So that's that, and he's filled up with some little gold Christmas coins, which we've still got left, I don't know how. Um, so that's that. My next chocolate theme, I was wondering if you're ever going to get to me because this is nearly gone. Um, let me see if you can see this without me throwing it everywhere. And you see, oh, this is my um, oh, rainbow peanut butter chocolate bark. Chocolate bark seems to be the latest thing at the moment. Um, <clears throat> And we love um, Reese's Pieces, but you can't get them over here very much. So we made some chocolate bark with just a layer of chocolate, a layer of peanut butter, a layer of chocolate again, and then some chocolate beans on the top. And obviously in all the rainbow colours, um, which is delicious. Not lasting very long. Um, and then some more slightly healthier options. We've got 
I think Maggie's whipped cream would be nice with this with some little clouds, but we just make these um, really simple rainbow skewers of fruit. Um, and they're great for parties because they're quite a sort of healthy option. And I made some diddy diddy tiny ones on some cocktail sticks to go in my daughter's lunchbox today. So she's got a kind of St. Patrick's Day themed lunch, lots of green green food, um, rainbow skewers. And then the last quick one, I've, so, I've seen this on Pinterest loads, but usually they use sweeties or candy. But these are beads. So um, they'd be really nice for little party favours if you make them with smaller jars, because obviously you need a lot of beads for this one. Um, but the trick is, again, I saw this on Pinterest at Christmas for people using to hide money inside jars of sweets. So I'm not going to tip it up because they'll all fall out. Let me show you. Where are you? So it's got a little tube glued in the middle of the, um, of the jar which kind of serves two purposes. It means that you only need about 50% less beads, which is great, very thrifty. Um, but also, inside there, I can put in my elastic and some little gold charms. So when we give it away, it's a kind of like a bracelet and a necklace kit in a jar, all ready to go. So that's me. I'm going to start munching my bark now. Ah, oh, that's all so sweet. Lovely ideas, really nice. Um, lots of party ideas there, actually. Um, the little clouds work as a little party favor as well, if, if not used as a piñata. And the decorations, obviously, great for the party background and the uh, Antia's art as an activity. So lots and lots of things. So if you're planning a rainbow party or St. Patrick's Day or anything like that, um, do, do look at this hangout again or come and visit our blogs and see all the little craft posts. But in the meantime, um, we wish you a very nice day and hopefully see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.